could be fun to see, Brian, but listen, I equate the son of the Hulk as baby Godzilla, man. This is ridiculous. Hawaiian shirt, tank top wearing, yoga meditating. I'm sorry, Brian, this Hulk is goofy. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, some news of Cap 4 and... The much-anticipated introduction of the Red Hulk. Me personally, Brian, I want to see the Gray Hulk. Me personally, Brian, I want to see the original Hulk. Thank you. That's what I want to see. I want. I don't want the Hulk being created in some lab and it's like, oops. I want to see the destruction that creates the Hulk. Rick, all. The, I want to see everybody. Brian, let me assume that it was spoiled by toys. You got it. Oh, snap. And <laughs> we'll talk about the, sec- uh, the the second on the second half of this show. We'll talk about Steven Yoon realizing what Thunderbolts, <laughs> what character he was playing. Uh, Cap 4, Brian, I haven't seen what the toys look like or anything but Red Hulk Brian have you seen it what does it look like are you disappointed well the toys are my nemesis for spoilers obviously uh, Lego Lego did us in this time um, <laughs> with the announcing their I, I don't get it I mean this movie I mean I guess they're, they've been recutting this movie but it's like we haven't even seen a trailer for the movie but they've already got the toy line out there uh, in some parts of the world but yes one of the toys that's being made available is a fully formed Red Hulk um, which would confirm the rumor that Thunderbolt Ross will actually become the Red Hulk as at some point in this film. Thunderbolt Ross now, of course, being played by Harrison Ford, succeeding the late William Hurt. Harrison Ford, when he when he got the part, someone asked him about Red Hulk, not knowing what the rumors would be, to which Harrison Ford did his classic deadpan Harrison Ford. I have no idea. Like, who is that? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, and he might have been serious when he said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But apparently he's going to be going the way of Nick Nolte in the original Hulk, right? And kind of being transformed into this sort of, you know, colossal destructive being in the final act of the movie. Now, here's my here's my two questions for you. And I think you just hit on it with the original Hulk reference. <laughs> the state of the Hulk right now, uh, it, it just feels <sighs> like we've piled mess upon mess like with the reception to She-Hulk we've got the son of Hulk we've got this sort of completely domesticated Hulk the actual Hulk who's just kind of a comic relief joke at this point it's actually going to make it hurt more to me if we then get this like truly ferocious destructive evil Red Hulk because I'm kind of like well, I want to see that from the heroic version of the Hulk. I don't want to see that from this sort of other version of the Hulk that I don't know how many you know films or appearances. I mean, I'm assuming it'll be more than one, but I don't know. It's just gonna it's just gonna drive home to me the point of how backwards and messed up everything related to the Hulk has become. If in fact this is the third act kind of centerpiece, a, a showdown between Anthony. And we'll get to that in a second. You know, the new Captain America and Red Hulk. I mean, do you want to see that? Like, is that is that cool to you as a finale to a movie like this? I don't know, Brian. It could be fun to see, Brian. But listen, I equate the son of the Hulk as baby Godzilla, man. Yeah, 100%. This is ridiculous. Hawaiian shirt, tank top wearing, yoga meditating. I'm sorry, Brian. This Hulk is goofy. Yeah. And I don't want to see any more of him. This may be fun to see, Brian, to pr- pr- because, Brian, this is what you'll probably get. You'll probably get that, 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 that yearning that people have been having to see the Hulk in his destructive. Did you see What If? I haven't watched season two. Okay. No, I heard it's good, but I haven't seen it. Watch it. But there's a character there that reminds you of the Hulk. And people want to see that raging character. And this may provide that 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 peace that people have been missing from the original Hulk. Here's my other question. Um, maybe I still have memories of the Incredible Hulk in my head. But 
I seem to remember the scene where, you know, Norton kind of transforms in full for the first time. Or, sorry, for the second time. Not in the warehouse. He's in the mm -hmm. field at the university. Mm -hmm. And they send Blonsky in with the serum in him. And do you remember what happens to him? How long that fight lasts? Yeah. Right. Not too long. Yeah, he, he, he gets broken in about 100 different pieces against a tree, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Anthony Mackie with no serum and his suit opposite a ferocious, full-powered Red Hulk is a... I mean, I get you... The David and the Goliath story can be fun to see on screen. I'm just concerned that, like, visually and creatively... How that will look. Had this feels like something that could go very wrong. All I can say is let's see, Brian. I just... Because the other analogy I was thinking of was like, okay, like when Cap fights Thanos, right, in Endgame, like he's he's on a team of three, he's getting his ass kicked. And basically they, he, he gets the hammer to give him sort of a momentary sequence where he can stand toe to toe with Thanos, but it's sort of an admission of like, even with the serum, he's just getting pummeled by yeah. a vastly physically superior, Bean. unbeatable opponent. And that's why I, I guess, I don't know. They, it just feels to me like with Cap him with with Steve Rogers, Chris Evans, in his movies they never attempted anything like this, and I actually think that's part of why that series is very successful. Like his fights generally are pretty evenly matched, and he's set up in situations where it's good matchmaking. Exactly. It's like even in Civil War where there are much more powerful beings on the field. It's not like it's not like Steve is fighting Vision one to one for extended periods. It's tactical. That's what when I saw this, I was like, ah, OK, I'm already. This is a movie we know is having problems. A movie we know is being recut and reshot and redone all over again. And I just I don't know. I, I just it makes me very nervous that this might be the. The thing we're supposed to build toward. Yeah, that's where we're at. But I think, Brian, we may get a little bit of uh, excitement to see some of that destruction with this Red Hulk and what it will look like, you know, because we've never seen it before. And I think if you do something you've never seen before, done in, a, in whatever way they're going to do it, people are going to be interested in seeing it. And they may provide a little bit of, uh, of reaction in a positive way. But for the, for the entirety of the movie, doubtful. I don't know. By the way, the, 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 the Reign of the MCU book, which talked about the production of Incredible Hulk, I, backdated shout out to the VFX team that worked on that movie because reportedly Ed Norton refused to basically do any motion capture work at all. Yeah. That Hulk looks good. Yes, it does. So for the fact that they could make it look that good with no help from the lead actor, and like now Kudos we're to them, at, yes. Now we're where we're at with, with the visuals 15 years after that? Like, come on, guys. Like, you Certainly, Brian. You. The Incredible Hulk looked good. I did also like how he looked in Avengers, right? He looked good uh, in yes. the, he, he Which, looked now good in they, Now, they said Ruffalo was great. He loved doing the motion capture. But yeah, and, like... And, and and Age of Ultron was he was all right there too, and then it went all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, this uh, spoiled look of what the Red Hulk will appear as. If you haven't seen it, good for you. Don't don't go looking for for it. But if you have seen it. Let us know what you guys think. Next up, Stephen Hume, Brian. I theorized <laughs> that's this is what I this is what I theorized. Stephen Hume was probably like he's an invincible. He's having a great career. Oh, would it be dope to be in the MCU? He gets the call. Hey, you want to be in the MCU? Sure. This is the character we want to play. The Century. Cool. He has no idea who this person is. <laughs> then it's getting close. The you know the, the strikes. He probably he's probably busy doing other stuff. As he's approaching shooting time, he decides to let me do some research on this guy. 
when he sees what this guy's what this guy looks like, he says, uh, "No, thank you. I don't care what you said. That's what he was. This is what happened in my brain. This is the only thing that makes sense. But sure, you're gonna hide it because of the strikes. You go overbook, whatever. But you realize what this was, and you said, "No, I'm not a part of it." Brian, what do you think happened there? Yeah, I think you're. You're you're on to at least something here because this was one of those stories of very quietly. This was one of the longest running, like reported but not confirmed in a movie where everyone else's participation was locked. This was the, oh, he's supposedly in the cast and he's supposedly playing Sentry. But it's like, you're right, like. This is a guy whose star has been nothing but on the rise, both like with independent film, mainstream film, voice work in Invincible. Like he's everything this guy has touched has basically gone pretty well the last four or five years. It's like yeah. if you had this dude under contract, wouldn't you want to tell the world? Yeah. So this felt like it was, you know, it's 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 college recruiting. It's like he verbaled and then he was taking <laughs> visits and he was like, nah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I got better NIL money over here. Like, you know, I, I just, yeah. Do yourselves a favor. If you don't know who the century is, look it up. I'll put a picture up. <laughs> Could you tell me, does he look anything like this dude, yo? This is equivalent to me of making uh, Chachala a, a different race, yo. This is complete. <laughs> this is completely the opposite of what this guy's supposed to look like. And he finally saw it and he was like, nah, man. Nah, I can't do this. I can't. You ain't going to put me in this situation. And again, I think in all these situations, like the state of the MCU at the time they had these convers initial conversations and the state of the MCU today is very different. And I just think a lot of these actors and actresses who looked at this as a surefire way to pay their way to make whatever movies they wanted to in the future and increase their profile, that's changed. And yeah. so like to the extent he never, it doesn't seem like he ever signed a contract. He and his agent with each passing month and each passing flop were kind of like, mm, mm, you yeah. know, you he know, probably said, he was like, cool, but there was no, there was no dotted line. There was uh, no, his name wasn't next to anything. This was uh, like the gardener said, yes, he's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, reiterate this should be a TV show, but yes, yes, I, I will, mm -hmm. uh, unless they uh, maybe they'll prove me wrong, but everything about this to me screams, yeah. screams Disney yeah. Plus series, not yeah, Brian. I, uh, when this news came out, I wrote on the Nerdy Basement when they announced this, I think it was on the Nerdy Basement, on, yeah, I think it was on the Nerdy Basement. I said, uh, just get one of the scars guards, stop playing games. Games is what they're obviously playing here. Don't play the games, man. Don't, don't look at us and think that we're dumb and that we don't know who the sentry is. We're gonna tell people, yo, this don't look, look at the sentry. Does this guy look like the sentry to you? This is what they're doing to you. Yeah. So that make, that make it feel good. There's other characters. Shang-Chi should be, man, I should be going crazy. I should have seen Shang-Chi over 20 times. But I have when I go to see Jackie Chan, Rumble in the Bronx, all those movies. <laughs> Brian, what's gonna happen now? Now that this guy said, I'm out, what are they gonna do? Thunderbolts, apparently, so you got the Red Hulk. A powerhouse. You're gonna bring in the Sentry? There was a moment in time where I felt like Marvel had this really great grasp of scale and relative power. Um, and I maybe said this on one of our shows a couple years ago. It felt like they had really kind of set up their roster where it's like, all right, like the stories that make sense for street level, you know, heroes and villains will be there. And then you kind of have the galactic kind of cosmically powered beings over here and like, now it just feels like it's a mess. And this goes to when I was saying, like, we're giving Echo powers. Like, we're giving Gaia. I mean, Ga Gaia is the most powerful character ever created. She has literally every hero's ability in one. 
it's like, and, and, and then to your point, like we're dropping Hulk here, we're dropping Sentry there. The scales are just constantly out of whack. Like, look at the people on the Thunderbolts roster and tell me who, who they're capable of fighting in a believable story that makes no sense to send the Avengers or Captain Marvel or anyone that's actually power or Thor, or anyone who's actually truly powerful. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it would be this guy, but. This movie's gonna be whack. Yeah, I don't see. I, who, there's no buzz. There's no buzz for this. Who, who, want, who is like, I can't wait to see this. You're right. The second Suicide Squad movie, not the first, because the first made $800 million. I, you, <laughs> David Ayer, finally RIP, the Ayer cut. Like, dude, <laughs> man, done. you made $820 million. I get it, it wasn't the movie you yeah. wanted to show, but like, yeah, yo, the movie it's like... didn't fail. People saw your movie. Yeah. Nobody's gonna see this movie. <laughs> like, if this thing has a $200, $250 million budget, like, that's yeah. insane. But yeah. like they have a lot of actors, so like maybe it is that high. But I, to me, this is like a 300, 350 global movie if it's decent. And you got these characters, and you don't have um, what's this dude's name? The one that was in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, he's usually the leader of the Thunderbolts. Oh, Zemo. Zemo. He's not coming. <laughs> he's not listed. Even though it seemed like at the time in the series they were setting him up to be yeah, that. yeah. He was like, I'm out, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that, man. Yeah, it's like, yo. You guys, we we need to start we need to start the Marvel transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> so all these dudes we put their name in. Oh, oh my god, man. Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what you think happened with Steven Yeun? What do you think happened there? Do you think he realized who this guy was and then he said, nah, I'm not doing this? Or it's more of the MCU is not doing well and I just don't want to be a part of what they're doing? Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes on! Yeah!